everyone. I am so excited for y'all to be here with us today for our webinar. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us. Our topic for today's webinar is how finance automation can support your greater mission. I'm really excited about this. This is a topic that we are really passionate about here at Summit Virtual CFO by Anders. Just finding small efficiencies and automation wherever we can for our clients is something that we always try to do. So I am excited for us to talk about this more today. Um, I want to introduce the facilitators. So myself, um, Hannah Hood, I am a virtual CFO here at Summit Virtual CFO by Anders. Um, I'm also the co-host of the Young CPA Success Show podcast. I realized y'all might not be our target audience, but we do cover some really fun topics there. So I invite you to follow us and take a listen to the podcast as well. And I am joined by Christy Buchanan. Welcome, Christy. I'll let you introduce yourself. Thank you so much, Hannah. It's great being here today. Um, I'm the Director of Strategic Growth for Anders uh, CPAs and Advisors and focusing on our virtual CFO options. So I'm usually the first person that people meet whenever they come to um, understand and learn about our organization. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, a couple of housekeeping items. Please use the question function in the Zoom session. You should see at the bottom of your screen a Q&A feature. Um, throughout the webinar, uh, Christy and I will be monitoring that Q&A function. So if you want to ask questions about anything that you see on the slide um, or even have a just a statement you want to direct to us that you want us to address during the webinar, please feel free to use that. Um, the replay of this webinar, the slides, um, all will be sent to you within two business days after this event. So certainly take notes, but please know that you're going to get these slides and the replay as well. And Chrissy, I'll let you cover a um, little bit about our background as a firm. Sure. So um, Summit CPA Group was founded back in 2002 by Jody Grunden and Adam Hale. And um, since then, they have um, they were focused on the virtual CFO op offers for us. And uh, since that time, we have merged with Anders CPAs and Advisors. That was in April of 2022. So it's coming up on two years now. And so it's been a really great opportunity for our two brands to merge and uh, focus on growth within the uh, accounting industry. Yeah, and it's been so great in terms of being able to be a part of that growth. And we are also joined today by our presenter, Matthew Merrill. He is a senior manager with Topalti. So welcome, Matt. Can I call you Matt, right? Like we can call either you Either one works, either right? one works. No, okay. it's okay. awesome to be back, Hannah and Christy. Thank you so much for for uh, inviting us. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if anybody else can get as excited as I can watching Bee Gees uh, music video from back in the day. I think last last time we did this, we had Queen. So I'm ready to go. Uh, I know. I watched the, that video uh, yesterday and I was like, wow, we've come a long way. We've really come a long yeah, way yeah. in our cinematic efforts and music videos. But that was, that was really awesome. Um, so Matt, give us a little bit of your background and tell us about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I work uh, for Topalti. We are a finance automation solution. I'm senior manager of partner in industry marketing. So what that means is I work across each of our ERP ecosystems and our partner, partner ecosystems like Summit Virtual CFO and uh, Andrew CPA uh, to align our solutions with uh, different clients in different industries. So um, we work across all of them, uh, whether it's NetSuite, Acumatica, QuickBooks, Xero, uh, Sage, uh, Sage Intact, we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, and I look to align our solutions with uh, different industries like nonprofits, software, healthcare, manufacturing, et cetera. Awesome. All right, let's dive into it. All right, so obviously you've met us, so welcome. We're really excited to, to be here with you. Um, we're going to talk about how you can gain a competitive advantage for your mission um, with Connected Finance. Um, you can leverage digital transformation to support your mission. We're going to chat through that as well. And then we want you to be able to achieve resilient future growth while maintaining employee satisfaction. We're going to talk through some key takeaways, and then we're also going to have a Q&A session at the end in case there is something that comes up that we don't get to answer during during the actual webinar. So you can certainly cover that then. All right, Matt, I'll let you take it from here. All right, so we'll jump in and we won't we won't go too 
far into statistics this whole time, I promise. But I thought this study was really interesting. So one of my roles at Tapalti is we administer thought leadership studies and surveys throughout the year. One of our partners is CFO Dive, and they've been really, really helpful. We've actually done the same uh, study to CFOs over the last couple of years. And what I've been doing is tracking how these responses have changed. Um, and I think what, what we're going to talk about overall is what is uh, an organization's mission, whether it's a nonprofit or a company that is just adding a unique service or product uh, to add value to overall society or to a specific industry. Um, and then what actually gets in the way of that? And, and really what it comes down to is manual processes can get in the way of that. So we're asking CFOs, what are the biggest things that you're focusing on over the, the next six to 12 months? And uh, this, these three answers always tend to rise up to the top, but the order of them change depending on the economic environment. So if you mm -hmm. remember, I'm gonna take you back to around this time uh, in 2023, there was a little bit of a recession scare. There was an understanding of, you know, are we going to have to really uh, buckle down and be more um, cautious with spending or growth and that type of thing? Um, if anybody's been paying attention over the last couple of months, I think the latest jobs report, the growth report have all been uh, a lot higher than expected. So things definitely change and these results can change over time. What is interesting about this is I see this as all being connected because what actually needs to happen is what what is what's your overall priority as a CFO or as an AP uh, manager or or anybody else within the finance department? Well, it's managing cash flow and it's finding ways to cost to for cost analysis and reduction. How do we make sure that we're running our organization efficiently, uh, profitably, and we're managing whatever we can do to grow? Right. Well, the key factor to all of this has been, well, how do we do this better? And one way to do that is to adopt new technologies and find ways to, to uh, for digital transformation, because the ultimate goal there is to remove as many of those obstacles as possible so that you can effectively manage cash flow and find ways for cost uh, reduction. But that's not the end all be all. The end all be all is whatever your organization's mission actually is, right? What, and and I'll, I'll get into this a little bit too. It even goes, it can even get more micro down to what's your individual mission. Um, why are you even working for that organization in the first place, right? So um, we uh, work across a number of industries, whether it's software companies that have new innovative tech solutions or nonprofit organizations that have a really specific mission that they're they're trying to accomplish. But what can get in the way of that? Well, typical things like funding or, um, you know, the economy, right? But in good times, even even uh, even manual processes can still bring them down, right? So what we try to do is provide a comprehensive finance automation solution and partner with the right uh, organizations out there, like Andrew's CPA, that are working directly with clients. Because we understand, even from all of our conversations, Hannah and Christy, I understand that those manual processes ultimately get passed down to you at some point, right? Mm -hmm. And you're also being tasked to find ways to help these organizations grow. So that's the linchpin here. And that's what I think this study is interesting, and we've been tracking it over time. Um, and that's ultimately why Tapalti exists. And that's why mm -hmm. we partnered with all of you. So do you, Chrissy and Matt, this is really a question for both of you, but like, do you feel like businesses, if they choose to not adopt new technologies, not look for efficiencies that they're stunted in some way in their growth, by choosing to take that posture versus taking one of more open-mindedness in this situation? Most definitely. Yeah. If you're not embracing technology, whether it's AI or other digital transformation, you're already behind. And so um, I'm actually at the ABA tech show here in Chicago right now for the American Bar Association. And one of the first sessions I attended today was uh, subs subscription-based modeling as far as from a pricing perspective and working in the legal field. And one of the things that we've always done at a Summit CPA group before we even merged with Anders is we've been on a subscription-based modeling uh, program for our clients. And one of the benefits to that is, you know, they have a chance to, you know, as far as from an AR perspective, we're charging them every single week. And so it's a smaller bite size price versus getting a bill with a net 45, net 90, um, something like that. And then 
you can have a la carte services. You can pick whether you want all the things that we offer or just a few things because it fits your budget. And so I think that, you know, especially being here in Chicago with the ABA, we thought that that was, you know, a really cool model that we were doing in CFO services, but it's actually transforming into other industries as well, whether it's law or, you know, I, I think that it's a, a model that can work when sep with several different industries. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. Uh, that's a great point. I love that you're in Chicago right now, Christy. That's where I am ultimately from. My family's in the Chicago area. I'm sure some of our listeners are probably there too. And I think you're there with some Sage uh, Tech Plus partners also, uh, which is Absolutely. great timing because we have Sage Transform in a couple of weeks. I'm going to do a, a soft plug there. If anybody's going to be at Sage <laughs> Transform, stop by the Tapalti booth. We could talk more about the partnership between Andrew CPA and Tapalti and what, how we're working together. And then we're also presenting ultimately actually two weeks from today uh, in Vegas for Sage Transform with two really great Tapalti clients that are... Uh, who have invested in technology to make sure they don't get behind. Because I look at it a, a couple different ways. And, and first of all, those two clients, one is a nonprofit, it's California Personal Care Association. Uh, there's a lot of complexity to their payment cycle uh, with grant distribution and, and being advocates for local health centers in the California area. So like the definition of a, uh, a great mission, right? And then the other one that's going to be speaking with us at Sage Transform is the language group. And that's, they're ultimately a tech company, they're software as a service, and, and they have, they bring services uh, to their clients, but they have a greater mission. So if you're, imagine you're abroad, my, my wife's actually in Berlin right now, believe it or not. And I have a seven month old, this is the first time we're alone together for a week. Don't worry, he's at daycare right now, he's on the back <laughs> or anything like that. Good luck. <laughs> uh, so, um, and if she, God forbid, if anything were to happen while she's abroad and she doesn't, luckily in Germany and Berlin, people mostly speak English or she's there with her colleagues. But say you were somewhere where you didn't speak the language and you were there for an extended period of time and you needed medical assistance uh, while you're there, something happens. Well, that group, the language group, provides translation services for those people while they're abroad. So, you know, that's why I'm talking about every organization has a greater mission and you want to add value in some way. And I even take it one micro step uh, backwards because it makes it a lot easier for you to be working and putting as much time and effort as, as needs to happen for the organization when it also contributes to your mission individually, right? So what's my individual, my mission individually right now? My mission is make sure that my seven month old, his <laughs> name is Duncan, by the way, uh, <laughs> is doing well. He's eating. He's sleeping. You're keeping him alive. That that's keeping him alive. That's, that's all. I, <laughs> hey, we're doing a good job so far. Seven months in. I mean, yes, we're we're a test without. We're having a test this week without without mom around. But uh, that's my individual mission, right? Well, what what do I need to do to make sure that mission uh, happens or is well funded? Well, that is um, that I work for an organization that is doing something that provides a, a service or or a or a good that adds value to other organizations. And in turn, that helps me stay well-funded and helps my family stay well-funded, right? So I think it's it's helpful to think of things that way because uh, whenever I'm talking a lot with our clients like California Personal Care Association or the language group leading up to uh, Sage Transform in a couple of weeks, what I love to hear is that we, our automation solution has actually made their jobs that much easier because that trickles down, right? If they aren't chasing down W8BNs and W9s or uh, making sure that a supplier is onboarded correctly or having to do their own background check to make sure a supplier is not on the OFAC list or uh, a bad actor, um, chasing down uh, invoices, the, the, we'll get into more in everything that we do, but all of these little uh, steps in the finance automation cycle or operation cycle represent individual tasks that take you away from your organization's uh, greater mission and then ultimately take you away from your personal mission. So I think it's just important. The linchpin to me is some type of automation and then working with the right partners like you all um, to make it as easy as possible that everything works out better that way is how I look at it. 
Yeah. And I think that sometimes the word automation, I mean, I feel like automation, AI, those are, those are big buzzwords right now. Sometimes that can be really scary. If you have been doing things the way that you've been doing them forever, like your work, you can take the mindset of it. It's, it ain't broke. Don't fix it is how we say it in the South. You can take that mindset if you want, or you can take a step back. Like clearly this slide is telling us 78% of finance leaders are going to take a look at that this year. Uh, You can take a step back and you can evaluate that for your business and you can be on the forefront of the change and the technology and the adoption of that for, for your business. And I think that this is true for any size business. I think that this is true for your, your mom and pops. This is also true for your multi-million dollar operations that, that you're doing is you can truly look at this, um, at any stage of your business. And, and I don't know about y'all, but like I would, as a finance leader, do not want to be in the 22% of people who are not, I think I did the math on that. Right. Uh, you know, computers normally do that for me. So (laughs) I I don't want to be in the 22% of the people who aren't looking at this for my clients. Yeah, absolutely. So, so this is from another study that we we've done annually with vantage research, uh, the great organization, um, actually used to work with some of them at The Economist back in my my other day-to-day. And the the study is is really just taking a look at what what is most important to finance organizations and how are they um, prepared for anything that happens next, right? So whether we do this during, whether we um, get these results when things are slower in the economy or their boom times, it's about being able to either while things are doing well, let's remove as many many processes as possible so we can facilitate growth. What what does growth mean? Well, are we adding a new entity in the US or in Europe or wherever? Are we moving some of our suppliers globally for cost or to offer a new product or or solution? Um, Those all represent growth and the amount of strain that can put on a finance department uh, is a lot, right? And um, I, I like what you said, Hannah, it isn't about taking away jobs. It's about taking away manual processes so that you can do what you're actually paid to do, which is help your organization stay profitable and help your organization grow and keep the lights on, pay the bills, right? That's the biggest thing. But if you're tracking down uh, you know, W9s all the time, then that's gonna that's gonna slow you down. And embracing technology just allows you to keep your staff as is take care of those things. And we'll get into more statistics on like hours saved, time savings, all that stuff. Um, and, and actually, I, I like that you moved to this slide too, because there's, look at all of these different um, aspects, like spokes on the wheel of finance operations. It's not just making individual payments. It's also expenses. It's also making sure you're tax compliant, especially if you're a nonprofit with a greater mission, uh, tax compliance is a huge piece of it. And that's something that we're able to help our clients with as well. So um, it it is not about removing jobs. It's about making your team stronger and more effective so you can actually focus on what your, your organization is looking to do. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if any of our listeners are familiar with the Enneagram. We we talked about this a little bit before oh, yeah. the show. I am an Enneagram 7. As an Enneagram 7, I literally cannot stand uh, manual task and like mundane task. And just like, it makes me want to like jab my eyeballs out. Like I cannot stand it. So I am constantly looking for ways. It's like, how can I delegate this? How can I automate this? How can I make this better? And my guess is you've probably got people on your team as a business owner that are feeling the same way. Or if you're in your finance department, you, I mean, certainly I'm sure there's people on your team. Maybe they thrive in that environment. I wouldn't know. (laughs) I, I do not, but I do want my team to be operating as efficiently as they possibly can. And if, in these areas, we can develop those efficiencies, then I think even if they're small, but you know, small ones compound over time. And I think sometimes we forget about that. So um, I love that these statistics are here. Obviously, I geek out on, on some statistics, but um, I'm excited that there are options for us that we live in a world where there's options for improvements in this area. Well, yeah. And if you're not doing all those, you know, manual tasks, you can actually be doing the things like um, discussing KPIs, really getting into the pipeline, all of the true forecasting things that CFOs should be doing rather than the doer activities of, you know, time and billing and those types of things. Mm-hmm. No, exactly. That's exactly what it is. It's each of those things are going to bog down your team. Even if, you know, I, I, We work with a lot of organizations where your team is two, your team is five, right? And um, 
if, if without automation in place, I, I love talking about and you know the before and after. What was life like before? Well, before that, we had to do everything manually. We had to individually email or call or track down uh, tax forms at the end of the year. You know, imagine that you've already you already worked with a vendor of January 2023, and right now you're tracking down the W nine. Well, what if that vendor doesn't work anymore? Or what if they just went dark on you? These are just little things that take up way too much time for you have to deal with when everything we talked about before, you have a life, you have kids potentially, you have a greater mission of your organization to work on growth, or you're being tasked by your, you know, your bosses aren't going to stop saying, hey, we're, we're, we're not going to open up that entity in New York because, you know, you have too many W9s to track down, right? No, the, mm -hmm. the, the workload's still going to get there and you have to find a way to automate it in some way. And, and so this is actually a great example. So you moved over to create music group. And I, so I don't want to, I want to talk about, you know, nonprofits, like I've said um, about their greater mission, but again, all of these, all these companies that we're working with are adding some value in some way, and it's making somebody's life easier. One of them is, is independent artists, for example. Right, so Create Music Group, they're on NetSuite. They uh, have been a client of ours for a long time. Um, they are responsible for paying out 25,000 artists globally for royalty payments, right? Those are independent artists that otherwise don't, that if they didn't have this group advocating for them, they'd be having to track it down themselves, look for individual payments, and it's become even more complex, right? Everybody, an artist could make money off of royalties from a YouTube a music video that they put on um, or a Spotify or downloads. Uh, you know, it's not as simple as just buying an album anymore, obviously. Um, at the same time, Create Music Group has four global entities. So this is all, what I, the other thing that I've been talking about. There's complexity based off of how many locations you have across the globe. Each one of those uh, entities have a different purpose, a different payments workflow, right? Different types of employees that you have that are making different types of payments. Maybe one entity is all sales and marketing. One entity is all product development. One entity is, you know, partnerships, that type of thing. So we were able to help them. And I like when it gets down to the actual time savings, because think about this with a seven month old, if I had an extra 36 days of time right now, it would be incredible. Right. And when, what would I do with it? Now, I mean, I'm, I don't have 36 days to just go to Hawaii, even though that'd be awesome. But what it would do is allow me to be more effective at, at my job. Maybe that allow me to be better uh, as a father to help out, right, with with raising this this child. Um, and I think that's, where I, that's what I need about connecting it to the overall organization, but then also yourself. This means that Zach saved 36 days in his, in his department's overall uh, payments operations, and that allows them to then spend time on what's really going to move the organization forward. Maybe that's finding new artists to work with. Maybe that's finding more innovative ways to to pay them out. Maybe that's leveraging AI more. Maybe they're going to invest in a an, an solution that way. Um, so to them, you know, Spalti has been a game changer for us um, to onboard and to pay. And that's key, being able to onboard global artists and labels that in and of itself represents multiple manual processes all in one spot, right? So this is a great example of a NetSuite client that we work with, and I, I love to see that they're supporting independent artists out there. Mm -hmm. And I love that this is covering the amount of days that you can save because truly like I did the math on this, um, on a podcast that we hosted. And it, you know, when I think of 36 days, think of the end of your life, like truly, like it's a little morbid, but think of the end of your life. Like if you're on your deathbed and somebody tells you, Hey, you could have 36 days back if you chose to do X in your business, or you would have chosen to do Z in your business, then I bet you would say, yes, like, give me those 36 days right. back in my life. Like that's really mm -hmm. impactful for, you know, you in the grand scheme of things. And, you know, it may seem little and it may seem small. It may seem mundane at this point, but in the grand scheme of things, like it is a big deal. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and this is another great example of time savings. Um, they, we get down to the hours on this one. So uptake is actually an AI company. They're using uh, AI to process data. They've been a client of ours for a long time. 
They are on Sage Intact. Um, like I mentioned again, anybody that's going to be there can stop by our booth in two weeks. Um, we're actually a Sage Tech Partner Plus. So we're working directly with Sage to bring our solution uh, to market and also ensure that we're compliant in terms of our integration. Everything that we do works with Sage and it's easy translation over there. But Uptake was able to save 600 hours a year with Tapalti. They shaved, saved, uh, they shaved, saved and shaved two <laughs> days off of their month end close process. So again, the ability to focus on whatever else is on their plate, right? Um, and their their profession, their finance team was spending 70 hours per month just processing payments. So imagine just taking that away completely so that everything else that's thrown on your plate, you could focus on instead. So they, they've they grown a lot since we started to work with them. They're one of our early clients um, and they've found ways to, to make things a lot more efficient. On the left side, it's a kind of a summary of key benefits from Tapalti. Um, we, like I, I've said this a few times, but it really is about eliminating about 80% of manual AP effort. There's always gonna be some where you're, you, know, you have to email a supplier just to get things started up but then putting the onus on them to provide all the documents they need to act before they even are able to get paid is what we're talking about here. So that instead of Andrew and his team tracking them down, sending reminders, where's the W-9, where's the W-9? I'm sure there are people listening to this right now that understand that, sending notes constantly, update, 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 none of that. It's on them to, to submit it, it's on them to be compliant, and then that allows us to then automate the entire payment workflow. Mm -hmm. And I love that um, the note about the two days off the month and close process, like obviously as an accountant, I'm like, sign me up for that. Like I want two days of my life back. I think my owners that I work with would be like, you can give me my financials two days sooner. Absolutely. Okay. Like, let's figure it out. Let's do it. So um, I love that this also um, you mentioned that this integrates with Sage. Obviously, that's a you know a big key player in the in the finance world, business world in terms of people and what you're setting up as your platform for tracking your finances. And so um, I love that that mention is here as well. Absolutely. And then another one that we work with. So we're again we're ERP agnostic. We work with all of them. Like I said, QuickBooks is another one. And it really just depends on what stage uh, your organization is in. Um, this is one, uh, Audrey Marshall, she's awesome. She's COO of Thematic. We've been working with them for a while. Actually, if you uh, check out QuickBooks website, um, they, we have a case study that details our story with Thematic more, but similar uh, to Create Music Group, they're also involved in paying out royalties to artists globally. Um, they're trying to get get them credit for any online plays or any online uh, streams uh, and that type of thing. So we support integration with all the QuickBooks versions. And, and typically it ends up being organizations that are smaller and set to grow, but not ready yet to maybe move up to Sage Intact or NetSuite um, or Microsoft Dynamics, uh, but are starting to feel the pain of the growth and the success that their organization has had, right? There's, they have to make more payments. They have to work globally. They have to figure out how to pay somebody in Berlin, like I said earlier, right? Um, and so we're able to help that at that level and then grow with them and make sure that they have the, all the benefits of 80% of their manual AP effort gone, speed up their financial close during a crucial time in the in the life cycle of this organization where financial close is more important than ever before because every dollar counts, right? Um, and then also protect the risk for this organization. So they know that, like I said, we have self-service vendor onboarding. We're, we have an integrated web portal. They're, the onus is on them. And then we're going to throw them through a 26,000 rules engine. This is where AI starts to get involved, making sure they're not showing up on the OFAC list, making sure they're a good vendor that you're actually paying. The, the level of risk, it's always there for every organization. But those smaller that are set to grow, it's even more important early on, right? Nobody can take a big hit and have to pay, you know, you paid somebody you shouldn't have, and then there's, you know, fines or just the loss involved in that. And I think this is also why we we partner really well with Andrew CPA, because you work with a lot of organizations at this level of the life cycle and that are looking to grow. You provide the services, you provide the subscription, making sure that 
they're compliant from a CPA perspective. And then we are just the solution that provides the automation that allows Andrews to work with your clients on a, on a better basis, right? Um, Absolutely. We've got a yeah. ton of clients that are on QBO or QuickBooks desktop. And, um, and it is because like from an ideal client profile, a lot of our clients are between 2 million and 30 million in revenue. So they're not quite there yet to take the, you know, net suites or the Microsoft dynamics. And so it's, it's great that they can still use their QBO or desktop and still use it with the Topalti uh, integration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Even it actually helps extend the life cycle of it. And I've seen this on a regular basis. So I was actually just with Audrey. We had a QuickBooks event over the summer. We were talking um, about, about their situation and she was saying the same thing, two to $30, $30 million in revenue. We, you know, this is a new, new thing over the last, you know, five to 10 years in terms of online royalty payments and um, how the mar market has shifted from, you know, traditional media, CDs, et cetera, to everything being online. We have to get more creative with how you have a revenue stream. The big artists can benefit from, you know, we're going to get plays no matter what on YouTube, but really it's about driving you to my global world tour where we make a lot of money on attendance, right? Well, you know, early artists aren't doing that yet. Um, so I think it's it's uh, it's really interesting in that they weren't necessarily ready for a mid-market ERP or anything like that, but they only have two people managing payments. They only, they they can't get bogged down by tracking down W9s and, and everything like that. So I think it's a really good example and where we match up very well. Mm -hmm. And I really like the risk mitigation piece. I'm glad that that was mentioned there because that is something that we are looking for for our clients, us in terms of the clients that we're looking for, working with, we are looking at risk constantly for them. And that is something as you as a business owner, you listening to this, if you're in your finance department, like, yes, we're also looking for, you know, finance automation and things like that. But you also want to pair that and make sure you're conscious of the risk as well, too. At, at all levels of your business, but especially within your finances. So if you can ab marry those together in terms of have the best of both worlds, then you really are serving your business well. Absolutely, absolutely. And so I've been I've been hinting at the total finance automation solution from Tabalti for a while, and I've I've talked about this uh, throughout the last half hour of this of this webinar. But this what we call the Tabalti wheel helps visualize it a little bit more. And I would imagine a lot of the people that are watching today, uh, I don't know what your roadblock is right now or what your you know specific um, issues are with the finance operations process, but I would imagine it's one of these things, right? What what is bogging you down? And that's why we were why we created the solution the way that we did. So it starts with supplier onboarding. <clears throat> if you see the statistic, we provide by by putting the onus uh, of supplier inquiries on the supplier themselves to give all of the their tax forms to, to check uh, to make sure that they're a good player and that everything is set up in advance, that provides a 66% reduction in payment errors. So the types of companies that Founder CPA is working with, Christy, that you mentioned up to 30 million, you know, 66% reduction in payment errors is huge. You can't afford to be paying people, right? That's, that's something that um, is definitely gonna bog you down. Every dollar matters. Or just like for any organization, but especially at that stage. Absolutely. Then same thing goes, right, Christy? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then and then same, then we get into tax compliance. So we have a tax uh KPMG approved tax engine that's integrated into the Tapalti solution. This goes along with supplier onboarding, where you're making sure that all of the right tax forms are included and that everything that you need to be able to report at the end of the year is included with all of your payments. Um, so that's a big aspect of it. Then we also uh, went one step further in understanding when when does the actual payment workflow start after supplier onboarding? Well, there's some aspect of procurement. So there's PO creation, there's approval process, there's vendor selection, there's budget visibility. These are all things that are very vital. And we use our own uh, uh, PO management solution internally, and I use this for any new vendors that we work with, but everything is extremely visible. You know who the approver is. You can check on your phone. You can check on online as well. <clears throat> and that provides a lot of visibility for an organization uh, in terms of what payments are coming up and does this align well with our budget. 
right? <clears throat> then there, I think what a lot of people look at when I, we say AP automation or finance automation, I think they gravitate mostly just to invoice management. I think a lot of other solutions out there that maybe some people on, on the webinar today have explored have just been about OCR, like payment uh, invoice processing, hoping that an invoice that you get from a vendor then is matched up and goes into your ERP or is leased synced uh, up to your system and then you can make the payment manually after that. I think that happens a lot of the time. Um, and to me, that's just one small percentage of everything. Uh, so we have intelligent OCR that's gonna make sure over time, as you submit more invoices from the same vendors, it'll know to, to um, in auto input that vendor's name. Oh, this is normal. You typically spend about five to 10K with this vendor on a monthly basis. But we have AI embedded into the solution so that anything's out of the norm and you start to see a 200K payment to that same vendor, AI will flag it. And we have a bill talk feature on the side that you can be able to, that will talk to you and say, is this normal? This is a 200K invoice. This isn't normally what you, what you put in. And then you can flag it immediately and make sure that there's a lot of checks and balances in it to make sure that that doesn't get approved or that you can go back to the vendor and figure out what happened. That was then, pretty intuitive. Very intuitive. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and so I'm going to go on for a while because we have a lot of solutions, but <laughs> interrupt <laughs> me at any time. But the one thing, the other thing that, we, that we've done is we, we understand that not everything is done at a truly formal uh, purchasing department level of spend. It happens at the department level too, right? So we've added virtual and physical card with cashback options from Tapalti. So you can make that department level spend on SaaS subscriptions, on tickets to events like Sage in a few weeks um, and that type of thing. So that's integrated into the solution as well. And then even more so from the individual, uh, the individual there is uh, an expense solution as well that you can, and I use this every time I go to different conferences. I used it for Acumatica a few weeks ago. I'm gonna use it for Sage in two weeks. Uh, on my phone, as it, as you get your receipts, easy upload and all of that. And then the, the biggest thing that differentiates us from anybody else is that we can do fast, secure, and accurate payments in 196 countries and 120 currencies. So we're not a brand new solution. We've been around since 2010. We set ourselves up as a licensed money transmitter across the globe. So we move money just like any other bank. We have competitive rates just like anybody else. So you aren't, after you submit an invoice, you aren't then having to go to your bank and say, okay, how do we pay this? Instead, we're able to move that money. You're just funding your account on a monthly basis based off of what your budget is. The invoices are going through the approval process. POs go through the approval process. When you're ready to make payment, you could do a batch payment to up to 196 countries, as many invoices as possible, click it, and they're all being paid by Tapalti in whatever method that that supplier asked for. So it could be ACH, it could be check, it could be PayPal, it could be uh, credit card. The, the, it really comes down to making things better for your suppliers than making things better for your organization as well. When your suppliers are happy, you're happy. I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, helps. it really helps. I know that uh, I never like getting an email from a supplier that's upset that something didn't uh -huh. process the way that we thought it was or something was inadvertently missed. So it just sounds like this really does help cut down on that error piece that just is sometimes just inevitable um, in, in these processes. Exactly. And then this is just uh, just a summary of Tapalti and what we what we're doing on a regular basis. So this number keeps going up. We have I think uh, up to four thousand customers now. We're responsible for fifty billion plus in annual transactions globally across five million payees. So people five million different individuals at organizations are getting paid from Tapalti. We have a very high customer retention and customer satisfaction rate of 99%. Um, that's amazing. Which is huge. And that's extremely important to us is that this isn't just a set it and forget it solution. We have managed services on top of it. We have a great support organization to make sure that this works for you. Because at the end of the day, it all goes back to what we talked about. Are we adding value to your individual mission? Are we adding value to your organization's mission? Is this making your job easier? That's what, that's the point. Um, and this isn't a set it and forget it type of thing. 
We can even get more complex with really interesting uh, payment workflows. So if you see up top, this is a little bit different from probably where we overlap with Andrew's CPA, but Twitch, for example, we're making payments globally to streamers across the globe um, that are getting donations. I don't still quite get this. I'm more of a generation that played video games rather than watch streamers <laughs> do it, but whatever. Uh, and, uh, I'll probably have to get used to this for my boy Duncan in a few years, but whatever. You will. You will. <laughs> I think so, right? But um, imagine the complexity of millions of streamers that have subscribers that have to, that that's a, a payment to the, the streamer on a regular basis. And then when they do something cool in a video game, you get donations uh, or just tips, I guess, from the street, <laughs> the people watching themselves. It actually does sound ridiculous the more we talk about it. But Twitch is a big, <laughs> saying big it out loud. Yes. <laughs> but I, what I think this is a great example, though, is because that's so complex, right? And you have streamers all, you know, in Asia and Europe, in Africa, everywhere, right, that need to get paid. And so how does Twitch manage that? payment workflow. I'm sure people don't think about this on a regular basis, but how do they do it? Well, mm -hmm. we help them automate that entire backend process so that whenever <clears throat> all of those payments are, are registered from those donations or from those tips, et cetera, those individuals are their own corporation. Each of those are getting paid out by Tapalti. As soon as your, the Twitch AP clerk says, these are all approved, everything's good, click pay thousands of payments at the same time globally, right? So imagine taking that level of ability to handle that complexity to how complex your $30 million organization is. Because I know everybody has equal amount of complexity, especially if you're managing it across a couple of people in your organization while also being tasked with figuring out how to grow the company or open up a new entity or whatever the case is. So but this is a good example just to help visualize what Topalti does themselves. And there's complexity in, in every business, no matter what oh, the yeah. size is, truly. Like, I mean, it, really, if you are a less than 10 person business, you're going to have complexities um, naturally in your business, just like Twitch is having complexities there. So either way, you've got to be willing to just look for these little ways that you can improve your business. Because ultimately, even if you are that smaller business right now, my guess is that you probably have a vision and a mission to grow your business in some way. So if you can do an efficiency that will help you scale as well now in your business, then, oh my goodness, like if you're figuring that out now versus getting to that point and being like, oh shoot, what do I do now? Then you're setting yourself up for success. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so Christy, you're with uh, some Sage and Tech partners uh, over in Chicago right now for American Bar Association. This is an example of how we work with Sage and Tech specifically and everything that we can automate here. So it's all synced back, two-way match, back to multi-entity general ledger with Sage intact. Also, we work with Sage 100, Sage 50, specifically, but many, many clients are on Sage intact now. This How is long have you had a partnership with Sage? What was that? How long have you had a partnership with Sage? It's been a while now. It's been, uh, this. it predates me at Sapalti. It's been four plus years. Uh, we were this past year granted Sage Tech Partner Plus status, oh, cool. which is higher than we've been in the past. And that just <clears throat> goes to show the the partnership that we've built there. We're, we're working with them on a weekly basis. Um, actually, <clears throat> even working with their SIAP partners and their direct sales teams that are working with you all on a regular basis who do use Sage Intact, anybody listening. Um, what that means is we uh, have everything up to date. We're able to uh, integrate specifically with Sage Intact with like user defined dimensions. That's some, every ERP has a little nuance that's different from others. So we understand that and it's not just a one size fits all. Um, but we are able to provide everything from the self-service portal that I talked about for supplier onboarding to procurement for PO management, the invoice processing, which is the old school way of looking at just AP automation, but a very important uh, linchpin to then payment processing globally or wherever is needed to expenses and then corporate card, all back to the supplier or your individual employee and all sync back up to Sage Intact. And then, like I said, I won't dwell on our awards too, too much. But we have been around for a while. 
We have been an award-winning solution for a long time that goes along with our 99% customer retention and satisfaction rate. But we've been on the Inc. 5000 list, I think it's five years running. Um, the Fast 500 list from Deloitte um, and a number of others. So this, this just shows we are a recognized and certified solution in the CPA space, in the finance space. People know us, people trust us, and we're just looking to work with more of you, basically. Same thing goes for global reviews. All of the, 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 the biggest review sites, we have very high ratings, Trust Radius, Captera, et cetera. So um, I, would, I would encourage you, if you are shopping automation and maybe you're on this uh, call, probably maybe skeptical, that's fine. If you're not skeptical, you know, like what Christy was saying or Hannah was saying, well, we don't want it to remove uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Or we don't want it to take anybody's jobs. This isn't what it's about. It's about making you more effective at your job to then focus on your mission more that trickles down to your personal mission. And that's what Tapalt is all about. And then um, this is just some more statistics because I think we like talking about that number of hours saved and that type of thing, right? So uh with our PO management procurement solution, we've found ways to re uh, reduce rogue spend by about $15.1 million per year. Um, now think about this. The average amount of time to code an invoice is only two minutes. So I'm sure there are people out there that are thinking about this and they're like, I'm dealing with this invoice for an hour. And I'm trying to figure out what's the right way to do this. What should I charge back to? Um, this doesn't line up correctly. I can go back to the vendor. So it's not just like how much time you're individually spending with it. It's also like, all right, this line item's wrong. Let's go back. I got to email the vendor again, all that stuff. But if that's all taken care of and automated, then that's all that time savings that goes back to you. And then more hours, 147,000 hours saved with faulty procurement as well. And then, um, this is this is really just about we're continuing to invest in the solution. So including so in in addition to investing in more partnerships like at Honor CPA, working with you more closely to get to your uh, customer base more, we're also investing in Tapalti and making sure that we're le leveraging the best and the best out there, like AI, for example. So we found ways to leverage uh, AI with. A solution called Tapalti AI um, that streamlines invoice management. Uh, there's AI powered chat. This is what I was talking about before. You bring in a new vendor, you, you send a, a quick message. Have we paid this vendor before? They'll run through all of your data and be able to tell you these are the last few invoices that you paid. Um, or flagging if this is way out of the realm of, of cost than you're used to. <clears throat> and then also we have GL coding and report builder uh, included. We've also, uh, just from customer feedback, we're continuing to add more. Like I said, we have corporate card integration. Uh, we can integrate now with American Express, MasterCard, Visa. So understanding that everybody has a different preference for that, and making sure it's easier. We're not trying to force anything on you. We're just trying to make sure that we're able to automate as much of your processes as possible. And it works with your current ERP, your current uh, cash flow process. And then you can now even with that department level card, pay off invoices with that as well, which can help save your AP uh, team time and get put the onus on the department level to handle it before AP ultimately reconciles. That corporate card integration is a big deal. I can't tell you the amount of clients that come to us that they're like, I don't want to switch like how I manage my, my spend, how I'm spending on a card. Like I get points on my Amex. Exactly. I get these points on my Capital One or whatever it is. Like I just want to mm -hmm. keep it. And having a solution that is like a one-stop shop for that in terms of being able to manage um, all of that spend from an AP perspective for all of it in one place is a really, really big deal. Like I said, that that's a big pain point for people whenever they come to us. Cause that is one thing that we look at whenever clients on board with us is we, we drill down and we look at their processes internally. We look at them on a granular level, even if we aren't taking them over because we want to provide um, insight and value to our clients and be able to say like, Hey, we look at businesses like 
thousands of businesses between the people on our team on a daily basis. So being able to give them that insight into, Hey, here's how you could potentially make that better. Even if we aren't going to touch it, like it's super valuable for us in this is probably one of the biggest things that uh, some of my clients struggle with. So um, we have a question that just came through. And the question is, have you seen a trend in vendors passing credit card fees to the company? Yeah, so it just depends ultimately on the vendors that you're seeing. Um, what's great about our solution is that we have, because we're a licensed money transmitter globally in 196 countries, we can move money just like a bank. So there's no additional fee on top of what we're doing. It's just like if you were to do money transfer with a bank internationally or domestically. So um, vendors could potentially try to pass credit card fees back, but it's, it's set up so that it's, just as competitive as moving money directly to them like ACH with a bank. So there's no real need to put the onus on uh, the vendor or back to the company. So like California CPA, or we talked about, they aren't having to eat those fees because we give so many flexible ways to get paid. So whatever is worth it for them, we have, you know, six plus methods of getting paid, PayPal, ACH, credit, um, et cetera. There's, it's something that will make it so that they don't have to worry about the fees like that. Yeah. And I would say for my clients, I have seen a trend in some of those fees being passed on. And I've even had some clients that are, uh, the, one is a brick and mortar organization um, at a manufacturer who has like, you know, the credit card kiosk you know, that, you know, they swipe the card and they get charged the fee. And we're having conversations about recapturing some of that fee. So that definitely is a trend. However, I would say, especially as we start are starting to see more automation, see more efficiencies in this, I really think that we could see a trend away from that because of the cost savings um, for organizations. And some some of my clients will also, also like build that cost in um, from a baseline perspective from whatever their product is or the service that they're providing. They'll just go ahead, we'll go ahead and plan for that. So we don't always like see it and feel it. Um, but it is something that we have seen that I have seen in terms of with some of my clients and that, that piece being passed on. But right. I'm hopeful we'll start to see it uh, move away in the future yeah, i think the key is flexibility so it's what what your vendor wants to get paid is the most cost effective to them they have multiple options based off of their normal way of doing business to choose then because we have set this up since 2010 because we're a licensed money transmitter and we have competitive fees it's not something that's going to be out of the realm of what you normally see um when we're talking about global payments so it's we're taking care of that on the front essentially. And that was a perfect time for that question to come in because we are at the question and answer uh, phase of our uh, of our webinar. So if y'all have any questions, certainly feel free to put them in the chat or in the Q&A um, section and we will certainly get those answered. Um, Matt, if people want to connect with you about a demo, because I know I did a demo um, a while back with a client and it was incredibly helpful in terms of to see how the, how Tapalti works specifically for them and their organization and how it could provide those efficiencies and solutions. Um, how do, does anybody listening do that? Yeah. So I think that the, what we're going to do is we're going to send out a follow-up with a link uh, that you can schedule a demo directly with Tapalti. It'll, it'll count it so that it, it's understanding that it's an Anders CPA, either webinar attendee or client, um, and we'll, we'll set something up right away so that you can see live how we work um, and whether your specific pain point is something that we, we can solve. So uh, that would be your best bet. Look out for the follow-up email after this. Si sign up for a demo. We'll get you set up directly and we'll keep Anders involved as well. And uh and talk about it. What we like to do is it's not a standard demo. It's not a just, you know, press play. Even though if you'd like to go on our website, there's a lot of examples and great videos about how uh, Tapalti works specifically. So check out Tapalti.com, obviously. Um, but what we want to find out first is what are your biggest pain points? How does your business operate? Because we set up overall finance automation, understanding that Every organization is different. Some have a lot of global payments. Some have multiple entities to manage. Every different ERP, 
all that stuff. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, look out for that link and sign up that way. And I will say like, from my experience with that, this particular client had a very obscure ERP system. Like it was just super unique to their industry. And when we went through that, ultimately being completely honest, like Tipalti wasn't going to work for them and it was fine. Like we, everything was great. Like it was a great conversation. It was really, really respectful and great that we could still meet and try to brainstorm what a solution could be. Um, but it was it was really, really great just to be able to see it, to walk it out, to talk it out, just to see if it would be a good solution. So highly encourage it. Even if you're sitting here thinking, oh, maybe I don't know. No, like book the demo, have a conversation, see if it can help because um, I have a feeling that in some way you could at least start thinking about that a little bit more and see if it can make an improvement for you. Um, so thank you all so much for join joining us this afternoon for our webinar. If you have any questions, um, Matt's email is here on the screen. Like I said, you're also gonna get these slides as well. So you'll have his contact as well as that link for the demo in that. Um, if you want to book a virtual CFO consultation, if you're listening to this and you're like, hey, what they do, I need some of that. And so this is the way to do it. You can book that time with Christy, who is on the call, and she will walk you through um, if we are a good fit um, for you in your business. So you can scan the QR code. And then again, you're going to get this in your email in just a couple of days as well. And then we'd also invite you to download our free dynamic forecasting guide as well. Like I said, completely free for you that you might find that of value in your business. It's one that Jody Grendon, one of our original founding partners here at Summit um, wrote and is incredibly valuable. Um, and you get that for free. And then I also invite you to keep learning. You can subscribe to the Virtual CPA Success Show, another podcast in our suite of podcasts that we have here at Summit Virtual CFO by Anders and subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's multiple webinars there and our podcast episodes are broadcast there. So I thank y'all so much for joining us today. Matt, thank you so much for being with us and taking your time to uh, spend with us today and talk about this topic with us. And I can't wait for us to connect again in the future. Same. Thank you so much, Hannah. Thank you so much, Christy. It's always great to, to be on these webinars with you all. I really appreciate hosting us and hope to hear from some of you who attended today in the future. Awesome. Thanks so much. Bye, y'all.